All right, guys. So we're gonna change out the float in here. This is the McDonald number 67G low water cutoff. It's a millivolt system, so you need to use a millivolt switch. I was able to find like a really cheap replacement float, but it comes. It's part number um, six 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 seven. Online it said dash MV. I'm like sick, perfect. But then I get there and it's just this one. So it's the same float, same piece in here. It's just a little metal hot dog looking hollow thing, right? But the switch is different. So I figure I could just use my old switch, pop it on there, and it'll be good. So we're gonna drain out the water, let it cool down. And then start moving the screws right over here. I was able to bypass the float shut off and the well that actually still works, so that's not bypassed. But I was able to bypass the float. So if you're having this issue and you need heat, right? Take the cover off, a couple flat heads, and there's gonna be two wires. Okay. If you touch those two wires together, it'll kick the thing on. Make sure your water level is, you know, stays where in the middle. Don't let it get too low because you're bypassing the safety thing. But if you need it, that's what I've been doing for the past two days. Uh, all right, so let's get this float off. We got a an, an old, new McDonald and Miller float. So this is what gets uh, switched on and off with the float, and if. Your, if your system runs on like low voltage, you need this switch. You can't use a higher one. So I'm going to use a new float with the old switch and it should be fine. So I have this all drained out. The, well, not all drained out. I have it drained out past the low water cut off. So there's no water in here. And we have one, two, three, four screws that hold this on. This piece that sticks out. And then we have another six, I believe, or yeah, that hold on this outer ring here that secures the float. Before I loosen up the main ones, I'll open the valve one more time down here to relieve any pressure. I just bought this Milwaukee, it's a 13 in one. <laughs> so you get, you know, uh, your 5 16 5 size quarter inch in here, and then you have like flathead uh, Phillips square bit there's the other crazy plus sign looking one for electrical work it's pretty cool and these actually weren't too tight so it's good to you know always remember like were they cr were they cranked down or were they just kind of pretty snug and yeah that's how these are just like it's not taking much effort to loosen them all right so that comes right off with four screws. Okay. Now we have one, two, oh, just four. Four screws that hold this silver plate on. Once you remove these four screws, this silver plate separates from the float. The directions say once you go to change it out, thoroughly clean this area, take the old gasket off. And the new gasket is already on, slipped on on the float, so. I'm gonna relieve the pressure one more time. So yeah, this ring is getting loose. It's gonna slip right off once these screws are all the way unthreaded. They look to be the same size as the other four, so that's good. Okay, and now this is kind of just stuck on here just from all the years. The gasket is sandwiched in here. And I should be able to just get a flathead and kind of get this out of here. All right, so moment of truth. I'm gonna loosen this seal, preferably with something soft and flat. If I could just, just break this seal, you don't, cause I, I, you don't want to damage any of this cast iron cause that's gonna be a $500 replacement. All right, let's see if this does anything. 
Might, you might actually even just need like a razor blade to cut cut it. All right, I'm just gonna use a screwdriver. <clears throat> Probably just a little tappy tap. Won't hurt, right? Okay. All right. So let's see what we got. Just as expected. The flow is very heavy, so. And there's water in there, you can hear it. Here's your gasket. So you're going to want to take this off, clean around it really well. Rubbing alcohol is your friend here. Um, if you need a scrape, then do it. I'm gonna probably flush this out a little bit. I know it's weird because we have a hole here, but it's like holding the water in there. Maybe it's a little pinhole. All right, so let's rip this off. <sighs> Almost got hit in my eyeball, so that's on there pretty good. So we're gonna have to get a scraper. Oh, very, uh, yeah, just totally corroded in there. So I'm gonna try to loosen some of that up, flush it out. this super duper clean like there's actually still some residue of the old um, gasket here but like I sanded it so it's flat uh, you could go crazier I feel like that's probably asbestos so just being paranoid <coughs> but here we have the um, the new float with the gasket right here so we're just gonna slide it right in and it just takes those four screws two on top two on the bottom to mount now I'm pretty sure the old one had an up and down, or the new one does. Yeah, this one says top, so we'll follow that. It says top right there. Yeah, it was one, two, three, four, and then when you put the other bracket on, it's going to be five, six, seven, eight. I got, I found 99% isopropyl alcohol on uh, Amazon, so that's pretty cool. I ordered a couple of those. Alright, I think she's ready. I'll get four screws ready <coughs> in the uh, retaining ring. This guy right here. So we have the new one. We have the top marked top. Gaskets on there. You could get it lined up, ready to go. And we could even get the bracket like that. Make sure the top still says top. I feel like it doesn't matter, but maybe this one it does. I hope. I mean, it's very, very similar. Sweet. All right, once you get one in, it's always a good feeling. <laughs> this system only has to handle like max five PSI, really. So this seal doesn't have to be crazy, but it has to be enough. Try to fasten these down as even as possible. Maybe like a crisscross. 
we have the outer bracket which is going to go right here four screws on the left and the right though and this is going to be sitting up upright like this reference very good yeah so these are nice and just snug not like don't crank on it not necessary you'll strip it before you, you you'll strip the head of the flathead before you freaking strip the uh, threads Okay, we're gonna just tighten these down now. I might block the cam the view a little bit, but I gotta get in here. Do the crisscross again. <laughs> Flatheads, you gotta love it. Jeez. And these are like, I mean, these are nice deep screws too. It's the worst, you have a flat head with like a shallow mouth to it. Okay, we're all snugged up. The float is in there. There's still no water. This old, this old one even came with original instructions printed in 1981, it looks like. So that's pretty crazy. Um, it's, it was just sitting in someone's like storage and I got it for a good price. Thankfully, I only needed the float and not the switch. So to attach the switch, we have these the flatter screws. It's gonna go just like this. And then we could put the cover, well, bring the cover down, which is up here. Attach the wires. Make sure, I mean, it's gonna slide right in between that little float guide. And we're gonna Don't cross thread. If it doesn't want to go in one hole, try the screw in a different one. Let me try. Now before I put the switch on, I could pressure test it, make sure it's not leaking. Probably not a bad idea. Now these screws aren't, aren't really liking these holes right now. Yeah, before I attach the wires, I'm gonna test the uh, the seal. This GoPro 10 is nice, but 4K60 likes to overheat. If it's warm and uh, it's not getting airflow. All right, so should we do the moment of truth here? I think so. We're gonna fill up the uh, water to go out here, and the float should lift right up, and I shouldn't have uh, a leak here. Coming up here. And I just heard it switch. Yeah, buddy. All right. So now we just have to bring down this cover. Reattach the blue on the left, this one on the right. Slide it on and screw it on with a couple more flat heads and we're good, baby. Now, I guess the ultimate test would be to see how it does under um, heating conditions. So. I might as well do that too before I wire it up. I'll just bypass it with these two wires, touch them together, turn the heat on upstairs, get this water level up to about half and uh, make sure we, we, we're still not leaking. Okay, so no leaks, awesome. Um, I ran the system, got it, you know, pressurized. So now I'm just gonna reattach these two wires. One screw down there and then one and one on each side, but it was missing one, so that's easy for me. All right. <clears throat> so I marked the wire, make sure you always do that. That one was the left one. It just kind of wrapped on there weird. Always wrap it the way the screw's gonna tighten, so it's gonna go clockwise. Lift it up, get under there. 
There we go. <coughs> Asbestos. Freaking me out. Okay, and then same thing over here. These wires, I mean, there's room for, if they're brittle, you could strip them and start fresh. But honestly, they seem fine. Get under there, tighten it. All right, that's good. All right, so that's good. Now, we'll slide this beautiful little cover on it. Oh boy, I'm so sore. So this just goes like that. It's one screw on the bottom and you just fixed it yourself. Saved yourself probably $500 if you could get a good price on the float. So as it fills up, it'll lift that up and uh, we should see some flames. There it is. Drained it with the heat on the water dropped down and it cut off the boiler so we're good let me know if you have any questions I'll try to get back to you and uh, answer them but that's it